begin, Doc? Yes, thank you. All right. All right, so good afternoon, brethren. My name is Alicia Jack, and I will be your moderator for this afternoon's class. Welcome to the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. This is a school and not a church. And neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non-denominational, religious and scientific research organization dedicating to showing you proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern and plan, operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinney in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. We were later on incorporated in the state of California in the year 1958. Since that time, we have established brand schools throughout United States, Canada, Africa, and several other foreign countries. Our local brand school was established here in Kingston, Jamaica in the year 1988, and our Spanish Town branch in the year 1994. The Dean of the Spanish Town Branch is Dr. Donna Mitchell and the President is Dr. Leon Jack. In this school, we teach by the true, correct, and original name and title of our Heavenly Father, the Word, our Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of our Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title for the word our son is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted by God. The true name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and not names. The apostle Paul filled with the Holy Spirit tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. This means that Elohim is the title that our creator Yahweh chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your path in a good dictionary or an encyclopedia would show proof that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any letters or characters in their alphabet that would produce the sound made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1400 years after the death, burial, resurrection of Yahshua the Messiah. Therefore, such names as Jesus, Jah, Jehovah are impossible and incorrect rendering of the true, correct, and original name of our Heavenly Father and His Son. Christ is a title, just like Lord and God. Mosaic chart, please, Doc. Thank you. Now, this is our mosaic chart, and may I direct your attention. Yahweh is pure spirit, and in this state, he is incomprehensible, inscrutable, invisible, and inconceivable. Yahweh is the ultimate source, the infinite and immaculate substance. He is the limits and bounds of everything. Now here we have Yahweh symbolized on this chart in his pure spirit state as a cloud. However, Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize or to depict himself because a cloud has no particular descriptive shape or form. We have drawn this orange fiery cloud all around the edges of this chart to show how that everything on this chart is within the cloud. 
In like manner, does everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in his pure spirit state, took on shape and form, right within himself as Elohim. This is the word our son, a super incorporeal being or a great heavenly anthropomorphic being. This is having shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. In this form, he can only be seen in divine vision and understood in divine revelation. Later on, this self same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua, the Messiah, whom the world erroneously calls Jesus Christ. Now there's only one name given unto salvation and we must know this name. So the simple yet intelligent question we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title can be added by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in this book, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him the threefold tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh later on instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we go about showing proof how that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. In our school, we have 10 primary constitutional aims and objectives, and they are as follows. First, to help you find and know Yahweh or Elohim as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race, nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religion, psychology, philosophy, and modern practical and occult science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith, which was once delivered to the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained, there is no other name given among men whereby man must be saved, saving in the name of Yahshua the Messiah. 10, to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace and our slogan is speak the truth. For this afternoon spiritual lecture, we will have prayer by Dr. Claire Martin, the scripture reading is taken from Romans 10 chapter that will be read by Dr. Veronica Robertson. And also we will have a song by Dr. Lenore Allen, our host, before the scripture reading. Can we now have our prior? Good evening, class. 
most righteous heavenly father, Yeshua, as we gather here again in this space, open each and every one of us understanding that we may come to know you better each day or each time. These are not a mercy I ask in no other name but Yeshua the Messiah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today I'm going to sing the hymn of promise. In the bulb there is a flower, in the seed an apple tree, in cocoons a hidden promise, butterflies will soon fly free. In the cold the snow of winter, there's a spring that waits to be unrevealed until the season. Something your alone can see. When Yahshua makes a promise, it is said as soon you see, and he surely will deliver. So, brave heart, listen to me. He is faithful and persistent, dependable and true. So, don't you weep, don't mourn, don't worry. He is making you anew. First a death, burial, and resurrection. As you grow in Yahshua, you are forming his perfection. As he says, and so you are. As he has spoken his creation, Yahshua, he speaks in you. You are his son, his pride, his glory. For Yeshua abides in you. In the bulb, there is a flower. In the seed, an apple tree. In cocoons, a hidden promise. Butterflies will soon fly free. In the cold, the snow of winter, there's a spring that waits to be unrevealed until the season. Something Yahweh alone can see, unrevealed until it's season. Something Yahweh alone can see. Romans chapter 10. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to Elohim for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of Yahweh, but not according to knowledge. For they, being ignorant of Yahweh's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of Yahweh. For Yahshua the Messiah is, is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believe it. For Moses described the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise, stay not in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven that is, to bring the Messiah down from above, or who shall descend into the deep, that is, to bring up the Messiah again from the dead. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that is, the word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth that Yeshua is the Messiah, and shall believe in thine heart that Yahweh hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Elohim over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of Yahweh 
shall be delivered. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the glad tidings of peace and bring the tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the evangel. For Isaiah said, Yahweh, who hath believed our report? So then, faith cometh by hearing the word of Yahweh. But I say, have they not heard? Yes, verily, their sound went into all the earth and their words unto the ends of the world. But I say, did not Israel know? First Moses said, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people and by an enlightened nation, I will anger you. But Isaiah is very bold and said, I was found by them that sought me not. I was made manifest unto them that asked not after me. But he said to Israel, all day long I have stretched forth my hands unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. I want to say thanks to everyone that participated in the prayer and the song and also the scripture reading. And I'm asking everyone to keep their mics muted throughout the lecture and to monitor their videos. And our scripture readers will be Dr. Veronica Robertson and Dr. Radcliffe Mitchell. Are there any first time visitor with us or will be with us throughout the lecture? Okay. All right, so our first speaker for this afternoon will be the Dean of the Spanish Town Branch, Dr. Donna Mitchell. Dr. Donna Mitchell. She's coming. Okay, all right. Oh, and please, I just wanna say this, I don't wanna be rude or anything. Dr. Mitchell, we're just human. So please just take it slow. Thank you. Okay, doc, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Afternoon. Welcome. Good afternoon. Welcome to another spiritual lecture given to you by the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research Incorporated. We are a school and we are not a church. And in this school, we go about showing proof of the existence of Yahweh Elohim and his son, Yahshua the Messiah. Now we had promised to look at the true birthday of Yahshua the Messiah. But first of all, he's the only begotten of the father, Yahweh. So he was really born in eternity. Proverbs 8, just let us touch upon on the spiritual birth and then we get into the physical birth. Proverbs, Proverbs 8, 22, um, just a few scriptures. Yahweh possess me. Let's have that one read. John Proverbs 8, 8, 22. It says, Yahweh possessed me in the beginning of his way, before his works of old. Verse 23 yeah. onwards. All right, thank you. Yes. It says, I was set up from everlasting, from the beginning, or ever the earth was. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no fountains abounding with water. Before the mountains were settled, before the hills was I brought forth. While as yet he had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the highest part of the dust of the world. When he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he set a compass upon the face of the depth, 
when he established the cloud above, when he strengthened the fountains of the deep, when he gave to the sea his decree that the waters should not pass his commandment, when he appointed the foundations of the earth, then I was by him as one brought up with him, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him, rejoicing in the habitable part of his earth. And my delights were with the sons of men. So Yahshua is saying he was set up from everlasting. So from the days of eternity. So he's eternal. So Yahweh gave birth to Yahshua in eternity. And then you find out that Yahshua is the first begotten of the father, the only begotten son of Yahweh. And in John 1 and 1, it says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with Yahweh, and the word was Yahweh. Then it says, the word was made flesh and dwell among us for 33 and a half years. So if we look at Yahshua saying that in the beginning was the word, and the word was with Yahweh before the word was made flesh. So you see, he started out in eternity. That's where he was born, in heaven. And he's the only begotten son of Yahweh. That is Yahshua the Messiah. And he says in verse 14, the word was made flesh and dwell among us. So we are going to look at the fleshly manifestation afterwards. But I'd want you to read 1 Timothy 3.16. 1 Timothy. 360. Chapter 3, verse 16. And without controversy, great is the mystery of righteousness. Yahweh was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. So we are seeing a round trip from where he came from, then he manifested in the physical creation, then he died, buried, and resurrected and went back to the Father. So that's the reason why we are telling you Yahshua the Messiah is from heaven. That's why he said his kingdom is not of this world because he's from heaven. All right, so we're going to set up time. And the, the, really, the dispensation chart shows the other enough affairs of mankind, Yahweh manifesting throughout the age and dispensation of time. And he was the one who set up time with Israel back there because in Exodus 12 and 1, let's have Exodus 12 and 1, Genesis 49 verse 10, Genesis 50 verse 24, because Yahweh is the one setting up time. And I'm going slowly with Israel. So let me read those scriptures. Exodus 12. Yahweh spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. So when you read Exodus 13 and 4, it tells you which month that is. Exodus 13 and 4. This day came he out in the month Abib. So, so Yahweh set up time, the sacred calendar. So there's a civil calendar and there's a sacred calendar and he's setting up time with Israel and he's telling him that Abib is the first month of the year. All right, so in Genesis, he says, Yahweh says, the scripture says, I die and Yahweh Elohim shall surely visit you. In Genesis 49 verse 10, that visit was in the Exodus, the 12th chapter where Yahweh visit. Israel. Genesis 50 and 24. And Joseph said unto his brethren, I die, and Elohim surely will surely visit you and bring you out of this land unto the land which he swear to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. And Joseph took an oath of the children of Israel, saying, 
Elohim will surely visit you and he shall carry up my bones from hence. So Joseph died being an 110 years old and they embalmed him and he was put in a coffin in Egypt. Um, so, so taking Joseph's bones out of Egypt represents a soul migrating because the bones typify the soul. And it also shows where Yahweh visit them as Joshua back there, who is Yahshua back there, back there to set up time as the author. And he came as Yahshua the Messiah, the finisher. All right, Genesis 49, verse 10. 49 and 10. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. Okay, thank you. So the scepter is pointing to Yahshua. He says, shall tell the tribe that you will be coming through, which is the tribe of Yahuda. He says, shall not depart from Yahuda. So it tells the tribe in Deuteronomy 18.15, let's have Deuteronomy 18.15, Numbers 24.17. Read, please. Deuteronomy 18.15 says, Yahweh thy Elohim will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren, like unto me, unto him ye shall hearken. So that's the first prophecy of the coming of Yahshua the Messiah. And Moses was the first prophet that prophesied of the coming of Yahshua the Messiah. John the Baptist is the last prophet that prophesied of the coming of Yahshua. That's why when he transfigured on the mountain of transfigured figuration, he showed Moses and Elias, which is the same John the Baptist. The first prophet that prophesied of his coming and the last prophet. And that's the reason why John the Baptist was bearded because Yahshua the true head was there. All right. All right, Numbers, read Numbers. Numbers 24 and 17. I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not now. There shall come a star out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel, and shall smite the corners of Moab, and destroy all the children of Sheth. So it tell you it's confirming that it, a scepter, Luke 132 will be read after this. The next scripture is Luke 132 to confirm that it says a scepter shall rise out of Jacob. It is telling you the progeny, the, the, the generation that he'll be coming through. So it is the, the lineage. Luke 132 will confirm. Luke 1, verse 32. He shall be great and shall be called the Son of the Highest, and Yahweh Elohim shall give unto him the throne of his father David. So you see, see confirming the same thing that was said in Numbers. So it says, um, Yahweh Elohim will give him the throne of David. Well, in Daniel 9, um, 24 to 27, but to save time, you could just read 27. It is telling you the time of the week of dispensation. So I tell you, we are looking at the tribe, um, that he, the time when he, when he will appear and the scriptures are pointing out, pointing to Yahshua. So this is going to tell us that it is in the midst of the week. It is one week of dispensation and he is going to appear in the midst of the week. Now, a lot of persons out there in the church where they believe that it is Wednesday in the midst of the week of our week, but it is not the midst of our week, it is the midst of the week of dispensation because it is one week of dispensation according to Daniel prophecy too, and he'll appear in the midst of that week, which is 4,000 years from Adam. Read. Daniel 9, 27. And he shall make a strong covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. Instead, he shall cause the prevalence of an abominable idol that maketh desolate, even until the destruction that is determined. 
shall be poured upon the desolated. So in the midst of the week, the sacrifice would be cut off. That is referring to Yahshua, and it's the 490 cycle. You would appear in that 490 cycle, which is 70 by 70, and also his ministry would last for three and a half years. He entered his ministry at age 30, and it lasted for three and a half years. So that 490 principle is also a part of it, and the three and a half year principle. Okay. Excuse me, I don't mean so, to interrupt. So you're pointing like right here, this is the middle of the week? Right yes, here? right there, the fourth, yes, the fourth. Right, okay. that's where he appeared. Just like the sun was placed in this kind of fourth day of creation, he's the true son of Yahweh. So he appeared in the fourth day of the day of the week of dispensation. Right, in the midst of the week okay. of dispensation. All right, All right so... So we set up the time when he would appear. Uh, we set up the place where he would appear. Um, we're going to go some more um, to prove that Adam, so since we are in the law, let's continue to show where Adam, Romans 5.14, came in on the sixth day. And he was a figure of him that was to come. Because after the migration of the children of Israel out of Egypt, and Moses was called up in his first principal trip. He had three trips in the mountain and the law was spoken down on the 6th of June. And he was called up six days, six to eight days after the 6th of June. In his first 40 day, which is his second principal trip, he, Yahweh gave him a rerun of the creation, a recapitulation. And he was still in the month of June. And he saw the man being formed from the dust of the earth, and then Yahweh placed him in the most holy place of the tabernacle, but he was taken from the dust of the earth and was placed in the most holy place of the, of the garden, in the garden. So, and that was the 6th of June in principle, because the man came in on the sixth day, and the book says he was a figure of him that was to come, Romans 5:14. Romans 5, verse 14. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. So Adam is the figure of Yahshua that was to come. The first, first Corinthians 15 says, how is that it that the first man, Adam, is of the earth, earthy? And the second man, Adam, is Yahshua from heaven. So Adam was a figure of him that was to come. And when you check, the lamb was killed on the 14th of Abib. And this, they had a three days journey. They resurrected in the wilderness of Sinai on the third day. Then they had a 47 day journey to the plateau of the moon. And Yahweh told them to be washed up and be ready against the third day from June 3rd, and the law was spoken down on the 6th of June. Now, after the 6th of June, Moses went up in his second principal trip. And how you prove this is Matthew 17 chapter which says, that says, after six days, Yahshua taken Peter, James, and John. After six days, after, from what? From the 6th of June. So Moses is having this rerun of the creation now. On the sixth day, he saw Yahweh created the man from the dust of the earth. So in principle, he was still in the month of June. And he saw that man coming in on the sixth day. So that is proving that that man was a figure of Yahshua. So we're going to see what date Yahshua will be born. So we set up the date already and the month. We also set up Abib as the first month of the year. Hallelujah, man. Now we are showing that the tabernacle represents Yahshua's physical body because he walked with them uprightly as the ark was upright. The three things that Yahweh gave divine specification to build and it was in a dark body in principle. Then he laid down his life. After he walked with them, he laid down his life. The tabernacle looked like a man laying down. 
and it had ram skin dyed red. Towards, towards the end of his ministry, he played the ram, caught between the ticket, which is the law and the prophet, and he died red in a bloody mess on the cross. So that, ram, that tabernacle had ram skin dyed red. And then the temple represents his spiritual body like a man sitting on a throne. But back to the tabernacle, because when Moses went up in the mountain, Moses saw the rerun of the creation. He saw the creation for six days and Yahweh resting on the seventh day. Seventh day. And then he saw the tabernacle for 33, a day for a year, 33 days. And that tabernacle is telling that Yahshua would, would stand for 33 years, a day for a year. Um, Ezekiel 14 numbers prophecy about a day for a year. So he's seen the tabernacle now, which represents Yahshua's physical body. And he's seen it for 33 days. And it is pointing that Yahshua would be 33 years in the flesh. That is one witness from the tabernacle. Another weakness, when Moses came down from his first 40 days, he came down impregnated with the information to build that tabernacle. Exodus right. 40 and 1. So the tabernacle was reared up. So he came down about, if you check from the about the 13th of June and you check 40 days, you're going to get the 22nd or the 23rd of July. He came down impregnated with information to build that tabernacle representing Yahshua's physical body. So that's the reason why it says in Exodus 40 and 1, the tabernacle was reared up the first day of the first month. Exodus 40 and 1. Exodus 40 verse 1. And Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, on the first day of the first month shalt thou set up the tabernacle of the tent of the congregation, and thou shalt put therein the ark of the testimony, and cover okay. the ark with the veil. Okay, Doc. Thanks. So it says the tabernacle was reared up or completed the first day of the first month. Or you know that this is the completion of the tabernacle because the tabernacle had to be built before the furnishing could be moved in. So immediately after he said that the tabernacle was completed or set up, then he started to move in the furnishing. He put in the Ark of the Covenant, just like the head is formed in the womb first of a child, being formed in the womb. And then it goes on to explain the other things. So you know that the tabernacle itself was completed. Then later on it says, a cloud filled the temple or the tabernacle. It is the same cloud that Yahshua came down from heaven. If you track that cloud, the same cloud upon the mercy seat, the same cloud that went with them when they were migrating. It says a cloud fill that tabernacle. Okay, so, um, so that's the reason why we know that it was nine months in building because people are speculating and saying, what if it was seven months? He was perfect. The law of Yahweh is perfect, converting the soul and the Yahshua is perfection. So since he's the law of Yahweh and he's perfect and he converts his soul, he could not be premature. And we are proving that he was, that tabernacle represents his physical body and the tabernacle was nine months in building. So if you check from July, August, September, October, November, December, January, February, March, April, you get nine months. So that tabernacle was nine months in building and it represents Yahshua's physical body. Okay, so that is established. Okay, so we're going to go to Isaiah prophecy, Isaiah 7, verse 14, Isaiah 9 and 6. Read those two scriptures into the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light or Holy Spirit in them. Verse 14, therefore, Yahweh himself shall give you a sign, Isaiah 7 verse 14. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name and shall call him Emmanuel. 
so it says a virgin because Adam was taken from virgin mother earth. And it says that he was a figure of him that was to come. So he say, so you see, Yahshua had to come and fulfill every yard and every title. So we have a virgin shall conceive. Adam being the, a figure was taken from virgin mother earth. All right, read on the other scripture. What is it? Isaiah 9 and 6. Isaiah 9, verse 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and he shall be called Wonderful, Counselor of the mighty Elohim, of the Father of Eternity, the Prince of Peace. So um, it says, choose childbearing, thou shalt be saved. And that holy seed, our holy child, is Yahshua the Messiah. And he had to, um, he had conception, birth, and his flight. We have to look at that also, if we are given the chance. Um, he had to, the government was upon his shoulder. He had to flee into Egypt. So um, that holy seed, or that child to be born, was Yahshua. And that's the prophecy. He says, for unto us a child is born. And unto us a son is given. So Yahweh, soul of the world, that he gave his only begotten son, Yahshua the Messiah, as the gift of life. All right, so we're going to go to Luke 1 26 now to confirm the birth of Yahshua. Luke 1 26. Luke 1 verse 26. And in the six months, the angel Gabriel to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin exposed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David and the virgin's name was Miriam and the angel came in unto her and said hail thou that art highly favored of Yahweh is with thee blessed art thou among women and when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Miriam, for thou hast found favor with Yahweh. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Yahshua. Okay. He shall be great. And okay. shall be called. That's it. He shall be called the son of the most high. Son it of the like, high. It seems as if you have a fan on, Dr. Robertson, because there's so a lot the of sixth, sound of a fan. In the sixth Please. month. But for us to pick up on the sixth month, we have to know the first month, which is correlated to our month of Abib. Abib is correlated to our month April. So for us to get to the sixth, we have to know the first. So April, May, June, July, August, September. So September in our calendar would be the sixth month. So this is the time when Miriam was conceived. John the Baptist was conceived six months prior to this. So Yahshua was conceived in September, if you check nine months from September. So let us check it. Because when the angel said to her, um, Yahweh find favor with thee. And the angel went in unto her and she says, thou shalt conceive in thy womb. It was not the egg of Miriam and the sperm of Joseph. Because as the angel was speaking, the she became conceived. And Joseph was, it did not say he, she was, he was speaking to Joseph and Miriam. So you would, would need the man there to help with the physical conception if it was a physical conception. But he was speaking, the angel was speaking to Miriam alone. And he was, the angel was saying, thou have found favor in the sight of Yahweh and you shall conceive in your womb. So that conception is an immaculate conception. 
it is the word manifesting as the flesh or the word made flesh. It is not the sperm of Joseph nor the egg of Miriam. So the founder said Miriam's body became the Ark of the Covenant with that ain't the two angels, Michael and Gabriel, and the law was placed. So just like that law came down from Mount the mountain and was placed in the tabernacle, is the same way this law came down from heaven because Yahshua is that spirit law and was placed in the womb of Miriam. So it had nothing to do with Miriam's egg and Joseph's sperm. All right. So if you check six, um, nine months from, from September, let us check. So we have September, October, November, December, January, February, March, April, May, June. So that's the month established. So Yahshua was born on the 6th of June. And how you know that it is the 6th of June? Because Adam came in on the sixth day of creation. And Adam was a figure of Yahshua that was to come. So we know that he was born on the 6th of June, which is nine months from September. And what they were saying about um, in, the, in, the, in Matthew, the shepherds could not be out in winter. If you get Matthew 2, Matthew 2, the shepherd could not be out in winter and he says that they were grazing. The sheep were grazing because that, that time, if it was December 25th, it would be a cold time. So we know that the seasoning are point, the season are pointing to Yahshua, which is the summertime he was born, the fruition time. John the Baptist's mission is opposite to Yahshua's mission. John the Baptist was an undertaker. His mission was to bury the dead Jews, while Yahshua's mission was to resurrect the dead Jews. So when Yahshua came on the, on the scene, he said, I am the resurrection and the life. So Yahshua's mission is opposing to John the Baptist's mission. John the Baptist was the one who was born December because that is the burial time of the year. So let us run conception, birth, and flight. So he's conceived in Nazareth. Nazar mean branch. In Zechariah, it says 6 and 12. It said, behold the man who is the branch. And Galilee means circle, just like you have your arterial circle of Willis. So he was conceiving the most holy place, just like he's coming down from heaven as this great heavenly anthropomorphic being is the same manifestation according to the tabernacle pattern. In the beginning was the word and the word was with Yahweh and the word was made flesh. Then he died, buried and resurrected and returned to the father. The birth on earth is the same principle. He was conceived in Nazareth. And in Matthew 2, you read Matthew 2 and, 2 and 1. Matthew 2 and 1. Now when Yahshua was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, Behold, there came Magi from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. That's why it says a star shall come out of Jacob. No. Um, so he was conceived in Nazareth. He was born in Bethlehem. Bethlehem means the house of bread. So when Yahshua came on the scene, he said, I am that bread that came down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and shall never die. I am the bread of life. And then he had his flight into Egypt, 213. Going by the pattern. Matthew chapter 2, verse 13. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of Yahweh appeared to Joseph 
in a dream, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt, and be thou there until I bring thee word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. So, so he had his flight into Egypt. So he was conceived in Nazareth, conception, birth and flight, born in Bethlehem according to the pattern, because the, the conception in Nazareth is the most holy place. Being born in Bethlehem is the holy place. He had his flight into Egypt, the court roundabout, and then he took back the round trip because in much in I think it's Luke 251, Matthew 221 to 23, where he returned after the death of Herod, he returned to Nazareth, where he was called a Nazarene. So um, we are seeing conception, birth, and flight according to the pattern. Read those two scriptures. Matthew Luke. 2, 21 and done. And he arose and took the young child and his mother and came into the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archaeus did reign in Judea, in the room of his father, Herod, he was afraid to go hither, thither, notwithstanding being warned of Elohim in a dream, he turned aside into the parts of Galilee and he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophets. He shall be called a Nazarene. So he was called a Nazarene. So he, he returned. And just like when he came down from heaven, he returned. It's a round trip. He returned to the Father. Luke 2.51 and he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them. But his mother kept all these things in her heart. And Yahshua increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with Yahweh and man. Yes. So we can see it is a, it is a round trip um, back to Nazareth where he was called a Nazarene. All right, so um, Yeshua sits as king and priest upon his throne because the manifestation of the lineage that he came through was connected to Joseph being of the house of David. Could you get me uh, Matthew 2, is it 35? where he says Joseph is of the house of David and Miriam is related to Elizabeth who is related to Zachariah the priest who is of the eighth uh, order of Abiah. So that's the connection between Miriam and the priesthood. So if you could read those two scriptures because in Zachariah, 12, somewhere on 6, he says, he shall sit upon his throne as king and priest. So the lineage that he's coming through would prove that he would sit upon his throne as king and priest. Now, the thing is, in the world, the king is in a kingdom, which is not religious, and the priest is in a religious setting. They don't merge them. That's why when they speak about Selassie being king, they don't speak about Selassie being any priest. So they don't have a knowledge of the vision. So Yahweh is the only one who has brought it to our attention that the king is a priest. And the reason for this is that the king is ruler of his kingdom. Or the root word for kingdom is king. So he's ruler of the kingdom. And then priest is the ministry. So he has a ministry and he has a kingdom. So after you minister to the people, you have to have a place to put them, which is the kingdom. That's why I spoke about the ministration of righteousness. So he sits as king and he sits as priest upon his throne. Read that scripture there in Zechariah, then we get to Miriam and Joseph. Zechariah chapter 6. Verses 12 
and, and speak unto him, saying, Thus speaketh Yahweh of hosts, saying, Behold, the man who is the branch, and he shall grow up out of his place, and he shall build the temple of Yahweh. Even he shall build the temple of Yahweh, and he shall bear the glory, and shall sit and rule upon his throne, and he shall be a priest upon his throne, and the council of peace shall be okay, on yeah. them both. Thank you. So Melchizedek, um, the king of Salem, um, is, he sits on his throne as king and priest also, and Yahshua had to fulfill every yacht and every title back there. So Yahshua sits as king and priest is proven by the lineage, the connection between David, between Joseph connect, being connected to David. Have you found that scripture that, that says um, David is of, Joseph is of the house of David and David is the kingship tribe. Uh, Luke chapter two, apparently it's verse four. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. Praise Yahshua. So we see that yeah, even though Yahshua is not the seed of Joseph and the seed of Miriam, Yahweh is connecting Yahshua to them in a sense by showing that the, the lineage that is coming through that Joseph is connected to the king, K-I-N-G, the king, and Miriam, his mother, in principle, is connected to the priest. So we want that scripture where um, Miriam met Elizabeth and the baby leaped in her womb. And that's the time when Yahshua gave John the Baptist, the, the spirit was upon him. So, and he says that Miriam is, have you found, is it Luke 135? Where it says, um, it showed the connection. Luke 139. Mm -hmm. And Miriam arose in those days and went into the ill country with haste into a city, into a city of Judah and entered into the house of Zechariah and saluted Elizabeth. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Miriam, the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. But it's important to note that um, that's why the Spirit was upon John. You notice it says Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. That's Yahshua working from Miriam's womb. You see? That is sure that is pure divine intelligence, knowledge, wisdom, love, beauty, justice, foundation, power, and strength, righteousness, peace, and joy operate. That is not a fleshly being. That is the Holy Spirit. That's why he said, the, the angel said, that holy thing that shall be conceived in thee shall call the, be called the son of the most high. And I want you to read Romans 2, 14 after this. Romans 1 and 2, sorry, Romans 1 and 2. He was made of the seed of David according to the flesh, but declared to be the son of Yahweh. That is the next scripture. So the babe, just to discuss this part now, so the babe, read, read over that last part, Dr. Roberts. Yes, um, that was verse 14. No, forty-one, And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Miriam, the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Read on. And she spake out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. Yes. And so and the blessing is being passed on there. So we are seeing now where Miriam is cousin to Elizabeth. 
who Elizabeth is the wife of Zachariah, who is the priest. So this is the connection between king and priest. David connected to the kingship and Miriam relating to Elizabeth, who is married to uh, um, Zachariah the priest. So it's the king and priest in principle. So he will sit upon his throne as king and priest. All right, are you holding another scripture there? Romans chapter one, verses one to four. Saul, a servant of Yahshua the Messiah, called to be an apostle, separated unto the glad tidings of Yahweh, which he had promised afore by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures concerning his son, Yahshua the Messiah, our Savior, who was made of the seed of David according to the flesh and declared to be the son of Yahweh with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. So he said he was made of the seed of David according to the flesh, but declared to be the son of Yahweh with power by the resurrection from the dead. And that's Hebrews 10 and 5. It has a special prepared body. That's the word made flesh. But he said, sacrifice and offerings, though who does not, I don't have any pleasure, but a body. And Colossians 2 and 9. Hebrews 10 verse 5. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he said, sacrifice and offering thou didst not desire. Mine ears hast thou pierced, burnt offering and sin offering hast thou not required. Then said I, lo, I come. In the volume of the book it is written of me. I delight to do thy will, O Yahweh. So, so it's, a, it's a special prepared body. And that body was the word made flesh. That body is the only begotten son of Yahweh. And in Colossians 2 and 9, it's, it will confirm in him dwell it. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the supernal nature of Yahweh in bodily form. And it is important to point that out, that it is the word made flesh. It couldn't be Miriam's child or Joseph. And in him, while he was in a physical body, that's his linen garment, his work clothes, he said, in him dwelleth the fullness of the supernal nature of Yahweh in bodily form. So that is the fullness of the supernatural nature of Yahweh walking up and down on the earth. Then he got in them on the day of Pentecost. So when we read Acts, the second chapter after the death, the burial and the resurrection of Yahshua the Messiah, he tarried up on the earth plain for 40 days. At the end of 40 days, he ascends to his father. 10 days later, he poured out the gift of the Holy Spirit in Acts the second chapter. So we were born the 6th of June, spiritually. We were born the 6th of June. So the 6th of June is our spiritual birthday. Although we don't observe months and days and years, we are really celebrating in the spirit. Um, Matthew the fifth chapter, when Yahshua was um, born back there is the lamb slain from before the foundation of the world in Matthew the two, second chapter. Matthew the third chapter is baptized by John. Matthew the fourth chapter is laid up of his spirit in the wilderness. Matthew the fifth chapter is another June 6th. was also the 6th of June. When the children of Israel migrated out of the land of Egypt, they had a 47-day journey to the plateau of the mount, resurrected the third. They had a 47-day journey. Yahweh said, be washed up and be in the 19th chapter of Exodus. Wash up and be ready again the third day. And I'm going to speak my law down in the hearing of the children of Israel. That was the 6th of June and the law was spoken down back there. So we pick up two, June 6th. And then the third June 6th is when Adam was formed on the 6th. And it was still in the month of June. If you add the days, because he went up the 13th, and then he saw him on the sixth day, that would be still in the month of June. If you had 6 to 13, you still would be in the month of June. And it was the sixth day. So that is 3 June 6th, 
And then Acts the second chapter would be the fourth one that we pick up. Um, so read Acts 2 and 1. The day of Pentecost was the 6th of June. Acts 2 verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So, Yahshua's physical birth and his spiritual manifestation, there's the same date. He was born nine o'clock in the morning, but according to the pattern, because the morning sacrifice was nine o'clock. So he was born nine o'clock in the, in the morning. The evening sacrifice is three o'clock. See, when he died, he was on the cross from nine to three to fulfill those sacrifices. He himself being the ultimate sacrifice, died, buried, and resurrected, put the gift of the Holy Spirit, on the day of Pentecost in their heart. So the same day he was born physically is the same day we were born spiritually. So our birthday is the 6th of June. It's just, it's just a principle because we don't observe days, month, or year because everything to Yahweh who is spirit is really happening in eternity. But we have to bring forth the witnesses in the natural to prove the existence of Yahweh, Elohim, and his son, Yahshua, the Messiah, in the creation. So Luke let us look at this. Luke let 1, us... verse 35, it says, And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Spirit shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of Yahweh. The son of the most I or son of Yahweh. So you can't call him the son of Miriam or the son of Joseph. That's the reason why when Miriam went to him calling him, he said, I have to be about my father. You don't know that I have to be about my father's business. And that's why he was speaking of the father. And Philip said to him, so shows the father. He wasn't speaking of Miriam and Joseph. He was speaking of his father, Yahweh. So he's saying that, um, Philip says, show us the father that he might suffice us. And he said, have I been so long with you, Philip, and you don't know that I am in the father and the father is in me. All right, let us look, run, run the gifts. So he was born in a stable, fulfilling Adam, who was born with the animals around him. So Yahshua had to fulfill every yacht and every tittle. Adam was taken from virgin mother earth. He had to be taken from virgin Miriam. So when I look at the gifts now, the gifts, uh, the, 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 the wise men brought gifts of uh, frankincense. Um, let us look at the gifts in Matthew. Matthew 2, where the wise men brought, brought gifts. And sh the gifts are pointing to his death, burial, and his resurrection. What is going to happen? And the wise men say that they have seen his star. It was a visionary star. And Paul said, I saw in the way a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun shining round about me and them which journeyed with me. That was a visionary star. Matthew 2, verse 10. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Miriam, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and gold. frankincense and Frank myrrh. And myrrh. Now that is representing, the gold is representing the most holy place, the frankincense, the holy place, and the myrrh. The court roundabout. It shows the bitter. Myrrh is bitter. It shows. How is it the frankincense? I know one is bitter. Um, representing myrrh, the bitter experience. Bitter. Representing the bitter experience that you would go through. 
and how that you would die, bury, and resurrect that body of gold, that glorified body. And it is the same gift we are going to receive, that gift of gold. After Yahshua goes through that suffering for us, that death, burial, and that resurrection. He said, I'll change your vile body to be fashioned unto his glorious body. And that body is a body of light. So these gifts are correlated to his experience. Just like the bitter herb back there would show the bitter experience that he would go through. So um, it's a beautiful thing to be able to explain how that Yahshua was born spiritually, being the only begot begotten of Yahweh, and how he came in naturally. So we want to recognize that the true birth date of Yahshua is in the day of eternity. That is what happened when he came out of that pure spirit state and condescended as a great heavenly anthropomorphic being, being the only one who came out of Yahweh. That's why he's referred to in Revelation as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and full of truth. So the, the, the birth of Yahshua coming in the flesh is after he was born in the spirit. So he was born spiritually first, and then he was born naturally in the flesh. And a lot of persons don't look at it that way because they don't put it together. But we want to acknowledge that he is from heaven and he was born in the spirit. Then it was manifested in the natural creation. All right, so we're going to wrap up now. Yes, that five minutes. Born, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. Could you get me Nicodemus? That's what Yahshua said. And we have to be born again in Yahshua by the preaching of the gospel, by his death, his burial, and his resurrection, and his ascension, and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. So he says, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit. So we have to be born again from a spiritual standpoint to receive this Pentecost, or this true birthday. John chapter 3, verse 3, Adonis. Yahshua answered and said unto him, Nicodemus, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born from above, he cannot see the kingdom of Yahweh. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born again? Yahshua answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, the blood also, he cannot enter into the kingdom of Yahweh. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born from above. So that's it. We must be born from above. So as the Christians celebrate the 25th of December, we celebrate the birth of Yahshua in us. So we must be born from above. So we don't observe days, months, or years. Some people say, do you celebrate the 6th of June? No, we celebrate being born from above. Colossians 1, verse 26. Even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his sons, to whom Yahweh would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the nations, O Gentiles, who is Yahshua the Messiah in you, the hope of glory whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Yahshua the Messiah whereunto, I also labor, striving according to his working, which worketh in me mightily. Hallelujah. Praise Yahshua. If you receive anything, give thanks to Yahshua.
All praises go to Yahweh, Elohim, and his son, Yahshua the Messiah. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Dr. Donna Mitchell, for being our first speaker. Our second and final speaker will be our visiting brethren, Dr. Frank Lewis. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, good evening. I really enjoyed the previous speaker because the things that were said there are great mysteries. And uh, as the previous speaker talked about, uh, well, we'll do it this way. Uh, this came by way of a divine vision and revelation. And matter of fact, the man that had the vision and revelation, he had it on June 6th. Uh, so the same day that, uh, well, the, like was just a quick review, the Ten Commandment law was spoken down June 6th. Uh, Adam, when Moses saw Adam atop of Mount Sinai come in on the sixth day of Moses' vision, it was the month of June. So it's the month of June when Moses saw Yahweh Elohim in a vision. And then Elohim transformed into the pattern back into himself. And then Adam came forth on the sixth day from Virgin Mother Earth. So in principle, Adam came forth on June 6th from Virgin Mother Earth. So Yash was born to fulfill that June 6th. The fourth feast day is June 6th. Matter of fact, the first three feast days are in the first month of April. April 14th, when they killed the lamb to get out of Egypt. They were buried in the cloud and the sea. They resurrected on the third day. And as the previous speaker said, 50 days later, June 6th, that's when the Ten Commandment law was spoken down. But that's a natural, that, that began the first, co that covenant with the old covenant with Israel. It's prefiguring and testifying to Yahshua the Messiah. That lamb killed in Egypt is testifying to Yahshua the Messiah dying on the cross. And it's the same day, April or the first month, the 14th day, which is the feast of the Passover. And it says in the Bible that Yahshua, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. See, so now, uh, so April 14th, when Yash Messiah died on the cross to fulfill the first feast day under the law, uh, the feast of the Passover. And Yahshua is our Passover. That's 1 Corinthians 5, verse 7. Uh, Purge out therefore the old leaven, that you may be a bread of a new baking. For the Messiah, our Passover, was sacrificed for us. That's why you don't eat the Passover or the Lord's Supper because Yahshua the Messiah has fulfilled that by being the sacrifice. And you can't have a feast without a sacrifice. And so April 15th is the second feast day and it was a Sabbath. So he died on a Friday, April the 14th. He's buried all that 15th or the Sabbath to, to fulfill the Sabbath. He didn't blink his eye. His heart didn't beat. He, he's fulfilling no manner of work on the Sabbath day. And that was the Feast of Unleavened Bread, April the 15th. Uh, that began the Feast of Unleavened Bread. They had to do it for seven days. So now Unleavened Bread, he's the true bread. He said, I'm the bread. In John 6, 35, he said, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. He that believeth on me shall never thirst. Believest thou this? So you find out that uh, he's in that tomb. So that's showing he hasn't risen yet. He's fulfilling unleavened bread on April the 15th. April the 16th is the third feast day. It's the feast of the first fruits. Yahshua the Messiah resurrected early the, in the morning on April the 16th, being the first fruits or the first one to resurrect from the dead and die no more. And he didn't resurrect alone. He resurrected, uh, well, just like April 16th was the first fruits of the barley harvest. That's a physical harvest for the airplane. That was all of Israel's feast days were during the harvest time. And as the previous speaker said, the world uses December 25th. You're not harvesting anything on the 25th. There's no, no fruit growing out of the ground on December 25th. So you can see that they have it the wrong timing. And so April the 16th, when he resurrected, he's the first fruits. He resurrected 4,000 
and 33 years of souls that had died and he resurrected with him after his resurrection. So that's a great harvest. Okay. Now, uh, -uh. no, no, please. Uh, we're just kind of, <laughs> that was a great harvest. Okay. We want the charts, please. Just that's all right now. And then 50 days later, the Holy Spirit was poured out June the 6th. Okay. So that was a barley harvest, but that the first fruits on the third day is likened unto the days of creation. The first day, the earth's without form and void. It's in a death state. The waters are covered over the earth on the second day and the first day. That's a death of burial. The third day of creation, that's when the waters roll back. And the seed of vegetation sprung forth on the third day. That's a resurrection on the third day. That's the first fruits because there's no, there was never no plants coming out of the earth until that third day of Moses' vision. And plants don't have flesh and blood. So it's telling you how Yahshua Messiah resurrected on the third day. He resurrected a spirit body, not a flesh and blood body. See, those are how you, and it's showing also that the children of Israel, when they killed the lamb, that's a death. They're buried in the cloud and the sea. They resurrected uh, out of Egypt. That's the first fruits or the first resurrection of the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. See, And it's all talking about Yahshua Messiah's death, burial, resurrection. That's the gospel of Yahshua Messiah, how he died, how he was buried, and how he rose again the third day. Now, now he uh, read Acts 1 and 3. What he did was uh, he, uh, well, under the, in Leviticus, the 23rd chapter, that's where you're going to have April 14th as being the first feast day around the fifth verse. Then the next verse will tell you the next day, April 6th, 15th, or April 14th is the Passover. April 15th is the uh, Feast of Unleavened Bread. And April 16th, it'll, call, it'll say the morrow after the Sabbath. It doesn't say 16th. But since the Sabbath is the 15th, the morrow after the Sabbath will be the 16th. And that's the first fruits of the barley harvest. But it's testifying to Yahshua Messiah. He didn't come to, to be a physical farmer. He came to resurrect souls. And they resurrected uh, with him after his resurrection on April the 16th. Then he tarried on the airplane making spiritual appearances for 40 days. That's Acts 1 and 3. Read that. Acts chapter 1, verse 3, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them 40 days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of Yahweh. So see, he was seen of them 40 days, and he was speaking to them things. The, uh, that's pertaining to the kingdom of Yahweh. And that's what we do. We preach the gospel of the kingdom. See, and that's what we're going to, and, and, and see, when you're preaching the gospel of the kingdom, as the first speaker said, the root word of kingdom is king. So now how can you be in the kingdom and you don't know the king's name? Now for 40 days, that means from his resurrection on April 16th, 40 days, from there, you would have April 16th, 30 days would be May 16th, then 10 more days would be May 26th, that's 40 days from the, his resurrection. So then that's when he ascended to the Father, see, and that's when you read about uh, in Acts 1 and 9, how that, that he ascends up into a, a cloud and two men in white appear, apparel uh, appear, that's in, in the elementary chart. See, what's he fulfilling there? Well, he's, he's, he's resurrecting in a cloud. In the most holy place, you have a cloud with the two wings of the cherubims. See, those two men in white apparel represent the two archangels on both ends of the mercy seat. See, and so he's uh, ascending in a cloud. And he said in John, I mean, Acts 1 and 5, John truly baptized with water but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days hence. And it said they, he, 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 went up, he vanished out of their sight. What, what, did they, what did they see there? They saw a vision. How do you know that? Because when the high priest went up into the most holy place, he saw a vision that the sins had been forgiven. So 
So they're having a vision. So he said those men in white apparel, which are angels, they said he's going to come back in like manner. Well, he came back 10 days later. So if he ascended on May 26, 10 days later will be June 6. That's when the Holy Spirit was poured out. That's the day of Pentecost. It's June 6 is the fourth feast day. So as the previous speaker said, Man, uh, Yahshua was born physically through the loins of the Virgin Mary, June 6th, and man was born spiritually, beginning this fourth age on June 6th, and it would have been Yahshua's 34th birthday, see? And then seven years later, they preached the gospel to the Gentiles, and they got the Holy Spirit June 6th. And then this man, uh, uh, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, uh, dispensation ages that's at the beginning of the fourth age this is the fourth feast day and also as the previous speaker talked about Yahshua is the true son of Yahweh so when that son appeared in Moses vision on the fourth day of creation it's showing that Yahshua is going to appear in the year 4000 being the only begotten son of Yahweh being born through the loins of the virgin Mary see and so his birthday is June 6 year 4000 he lived 33 years, then he dies, buries, resurrects, ascends, and pours out the Holy Spirit, and that would have been his 34th birthday. So that's June 6, year 4034, and then seven years later, the Gentiles received the Holy Spirit. That was June 6, year 4041, and, that's show, and it's all in the fourth age. And see, the fourth age is comparative in the tabernacle pattern to the fourth step of the pattern, which is the door. That's where the high priest was anointed. So Yahweh's pouring out his Holy Spirit in this age, in the fourth age. And this is when, at the end of the age, this is where Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley had a vision. He had a vision on June 6th. He said he didn't understand it. Then Yahweh gave him the revelation of the vision on the same June 6th. And that was June 6, 1931. That's when he was born of the Spirit. In other words, he didn't know it. He didn't know the purpose and plan of Yahweh until the Holy Spirit revealed it to him uh, uh, on June 6, 1931. Uh, and now, uh, well, let's do it this way. Read John 14, 26. Now, now, look, people talk about they have the Holy Spirit. Well, the Holy Spirit said he'll teach you all things. Don't you think the Holy Spirit knows when he came in a physical body back there through the loins of the Virgin Mary? Wouldn't the Holy Spirit know that uh, June 6th is when the Holy Spirit was poured out? Then why would somebody say December 25th and say Merry Christmas and say that's when the Savior was born, but we know he wasn't born then, but they still celebrate that day. Would that be the Holy Spirit? No, the Holy Spirit in John 14. You might as well read that. John, well, read John 14 and 6. John 14, verse 6. Yahshua saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. Now, Yahshua Messiah is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me him you got to come through Yahshua see and it wasn't Jesus because by uh well in Matthew 121 the angel said thou shalt call his name Yahshua for he shall save his people from their sin so right there Yahshua it it means Yahweh is salvation and it has a colon there it said for he shall save his people from their sin Yahshua means Yahweh is salvation Acts 4 and 12 says, neither is there salvation the other. There's none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. There's only one name you can be saved in. And so what the devil did is take out Yahshua and put Jesus there. That's wrong. Then they say he's born December 25th and celebrate Merry Christmas. And, 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 and that's wrong. Then they tell you, then 
Yahweh, John 3, 16 said, Yahweh so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He's the gift Yahweh's given to the world and they don't want him. They want to give gifts to each other on December 25th instead of receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit. And see, they, 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 it's not even a gift with them because they go to church and pay money. Uh, do you pay, when somebody gives you a gift, do you say, how much do I owe you? No, you don't pay for gifts. But that's what the world's doing. They're selling you false doctrine and you're buying it. See, they're telling you give 10% of your money and uh, Yahshua Messiah paid the price in full with his blood. Now read John 14, 16. John 14, verse 16. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth, which the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him. For he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. So back then, he said, uh, the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. And the world doesn't receive it here. You can tell them the true birthday. It don't mean nothing to them. You understand? They don't have nothing better. They just go ahead on and just uh, believe they're December 25th and say Merry Christmas and talk about Santa Claus and and. and and pray that, that Mary's the ever blessed virgin. And she had many children after that. She's not no, and she ain't no mother of God either. As the Roman Catholic Church say, Mary, the mother of God. That's not God's mother. The creator, well, it might be God's mother, but it sure ain't Yahweh's. <laughs> but, uh, but it said the spirit of truth, he's talking to his disciples before the cross. He said the spirit, even the spirit of truth in the world can't receive, he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. He, that's what happened on the day of Pentecost. He got in them. Read John 14, 26. 14, 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Now, if Yahshua says, but the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, the Holy Spirit's going to be sent in the name of Yahshua. He shall teach you all things and bring all things back to remembrance whatsoever I say unto you. That's why they don't know when he's born. That's why they don't know that really when he came forth from Yahweh as the Father, pure spirit, and took on shape and form as Elohim, that's the birthday of the Messiah. That's a spirit body coming forth, and you can't put no month and day on that. Just like was said earlier, that was in the realm of eternity. Matter of fact, he's the light of the world. He's the really only begotten son that created the physical son that you got in the sky. You understand? Uh, so it's the real son, you know, that's why the scientists say, oh, I don't believe the Bible because they got plants coming forth on the third day and they got the sun coming in on the fourth day and plants can't resurrect without the sun. Well, they are correct. Plants do have to have the sun to have life, but they fail to realize Yahweh Elohim is the son of Yahweh and he's the one that brought forth the plants. He's the real sun that giveth life to everything. But he also made, and why he had that son placed in the fourth day of Moses' vision is to show that he's going to come in a fleshly body year 4,000. Because 2 Peter 3 and 8 says, Beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day with Yahweh is a thousand years, and a thousand years is as one day. So yet, yeah, uh, uh, we can show, we show when he came forth in the spirit. And then we show when he came down to fulfill things, it came down through the loins of the Virgin Mary. See, uh, and, and he had to come and fulfill. Matter of fact, and that ain't the first time he come. Matter of fact, he came back there with, yeah, he was Yahshua, the son of none. 
The one they called Joshua, the son of Nun, that was Joshua back there giving them the vision uh, to Moses about the vision of the creation. He's the one giving the vision at the burning bush, telling them what, what the name of the Heavenly Father is. Moses is 80 years old when he gets the name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. And Exodus 3.15 says, you tell the children of Israel that Yahweh, the Elm of your fathers, the Elm of Abraham, the Elm of Isaac, the Elm of Jacob, sent me unto you. This is my name forever and a memorial throughout all generations. That's why we use his name. He, that's the name he gave himself. And he revealed it unto Moses by vision. Now we have a vision revelation. And that's why we aren't going to use no other name beside Yahweh, because that's, he said, that's his name forever. Matter of fact, that's a heavenly name. You understand? Uh, they say, oh, that's Hebrew. No, that's heavenly before there was a Hebrew man. Yeah, that's his name. Don't you think Yahweh's intelligent enough to tell you what his name is and be able to give you witnesses to prove it? And that's what we've received down here in this school. And that's why it's precious and beautiful. And that's why uh, when people say it don't matter what you call them, well, we know that's a lie. That's the devil doing that. Uh, yeah, it don't matter what you call him. He's called uh, dragon. He's called serpent. He's called Lucifer, devil, Satan. Yeah, he's the one with the Lord God... <laughs> Yeah. He's the one with the many titles and names. Beelzebub. That's right. So, uh, and then in Psalms one, you know, so the name matters. In other words, uh, and there, you do have a true name, and those are heavenly names, and that's why this teaching's a heavenly gospel. You understand? Uh, and that's a heavenly pattern he gave the children of Israel. Okay, let's do this. Um, get the name chart for a moment. Now, see, we're talking about the Savior being born. Well, all of us was born physically. You understand? Now, see, the name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. Uh, you got to use the, you got to have the names there. I got to see the name. Yeah, there you go. See, Yahweh is the name of the Father. And what he did, he took on, well, look down below here. See, Yahweh, it has one there. He's pure spirit. It, it's as a cloud. He was as a, a uh, fiery cloud that's how he symbolized himself a cloud has no de de uh, descriptive shape or form okay he's incomprehensible inscrutable uh, that's father means first state then what he did is he took on shape and form as the word or son elohim that's the second state that's that spirit embodiment that was shown in visions to moses and the prophets see and also appeared to the whole to dr kinley see and gave him this vision revelation at the end of this age. Then the third state, you had the word made flesh, which is Yahshua the Messiah. See, uh, now you know what? That's exactly how you come into the world. And how a physical birth is, that's how you show a spiritual birth. What do you mean? If you look right above there, you have the, you, have, you, have, you see how it says X, Y, chromosome, and androgen? Well, that's a boy baby. What happened is the woman uh, has an egg, and then the man, uh, the father, uh, well, he, he, he injects his spermatozoa. It goes up into the womb and goes up to the fallopian tubes. And what you have is you have an impregnation. And so if a Y sex chromosome of the spermatozoa hooks up with the X of the egg, that's what makes a boy baby. Why would a boy baby have a Y chromosome? Because the father is Yahweh and his only begotten son is Yahshua with the Y. Okay. Now what makes a girl baby is, you know, she, that woman only has the X sex chromosome. And then when the spermatozoa of the man, if you have an X sex chromosome hooking up with the X with the uh, egg, then you have XX. That's a, that's a female. Okay. Now when the, uh, when those sexual secretions come together, they form a cloud, just like Yahweh. But everything that's going to make up that baby is right within that cloud. Okay? Then, then that cell starts dividing, and it goes down the fallopian tubes and starts doing cell division. And what happens is baby takes on shape and form right within the womb. It's the same substance. You understand? 
and but the baby is on is, is taking on shape and form and it's only seen in special uh vision x-ray vision sonogram ultrasound just like yahweh elohim was seen in uh he's invisible but he's seen in visions and then later on you're born into this world and that's you with a fleshly body your spirit soul body but the same substance that you came from you was that you was that spermatozoa and that egg and that cloudy substance you was in your mother's womb walking uh you know uh invisible but visible by special vision just like elohim's invisible but he showed himself in visions and then now you are you have a fleshly body walking around the airplane just like he took on a fleshly body and walked around as Joshua the Messiah. See, so you see how you're made in his image after his likeness. Okay, and if you look over, uh, well, uh, well, let's do it this way. Uh, the previous speaker got Exodus the 40th chapter, so let's talk about that for a little bit and get the man made in the image of Elohim by the pattern. Read Exodus 40 and 1. And so uh, the first thing it takes on shape and form in your body is the head. So this is the first thing you're going to read about with the tabernacle. And that's why when you come in this class, that's the first thing we deal with is your head and what's in your head. You understand? Because what's been taught in your all your life, you've been lied to. And we're going to tell you the truth. And, and that's the love of Yahweh to correct you and, uh, and, 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 and to show you the truth before it's eternally too late. Uh, do you have Exodus uh, 40 verse 1 and Yahweh spake unto Moses saying on the first day of the first month shalt thou set up the tabernacle of the tent of the congregation and thou yeah so the first day of the first month that's April when Moses saw it in his vision it was first impregnated in his mind in June June is the third month. So you had three months is when he got the conception of the tabernacle or the pattern in up the top of Mount Sinai. See, three months have passed. So then you so if you're going to do April 1st, that means you have to end up with March there as the ninth month. You understand? Because April 1st, you can't use April because he's going to be starting on April 1st. So that's how you get nine months. It was shown in June and, and, and conceived in June. And then uh, by April 1st, there's your nine months. Okay. Uh, so he says, that's when you got, and look what they call April 1st. That's when this tabernacle is set up. And our April 1st, we have now, they say April fool. Yeah, you've all been fooled because you don't know nothing about a tabernacle pattern. And you don't know that April's the first month of the year, according to the Bible. They, now, and that's what they do. I'll get that tabernacle with the month just for a little brief moment. See, there were 12 tribes around the tabernacle. See, and the months that they have around, I mean, uh, the months that they use December 25th, that's the court roundabout. It's showing that they're dead and buried, saying he was born December 25th. John the Baptist was born in December. Also, one week from December 25th is January 1st, and they say Happy New Year. Do you know January is the 10th month, according to the Bible? That's a big difference between saying it's the first month and it's the 10th month. See how far wrong they are? Okay, <laughs> so uh, you see where we got December, January, and February? Those are court roundabout months. That's where those are the death and the burial time. Those are the winter time. That's the death and the burial time. See, and also it's representing a principle when you look at the migratory pattern. The migratory pattern, you have Egypt being the court roundabout. Egypt's where the children of Israel are in bondage. So mankind is in bondage to the wrong timing, saying he was born December 25th, January 1st is the happy new year. You understand 
how man's in bondage to false doctrine and lies, but they say they believe the Bible, don't they? No. And see, there were three, and if you look on there, there's three feast days in April. That's a holy, holy, they were holy days. There's one in June, and June's most holy place. That's when he was born. That's when the Holy Spirit was poured out. That's when Dr. Kinley had the vision of Revelation, June. Then there's three feast days in October. See, now that's still holy place. So those are holy days. Three in April, one in June, three in October. Seven feast days, three time, three months out of the year. It's going by a pattern because the pattern has three compartments and seven steps. Okay, let's keep reading in Exodus uh, 40 and get the tabernacle in the human body. Exodus 40, verse 3. And thou shalt put therein the ark of the testimony and cover the ark with the veil. So the first thing, the first vessel that was put into the tabernacle was the ark of the testimony. That's the ark of the covenant. And that's the first thing that takes on shape and form for you is your head. You understand? That spermatozoa and the egg, when it's impregnated, it's called a zygote. It's one cell. Then the cell divides and it still looks like a cloud and your brain looks like a cloud. You understand? It's gray and white matter likened unto a cloud. Okay. Yahweh said he would dwell in the, in Leviticus 16 and 2, it said Yahweh said he would dwell in the cloud between the wings of the cherubim. You understand? Uh, upon, between the two uh, angels upon the mercy seat, he would dwell in the cloud. So the Ark of the Covenant has, is a three-in-one furnishing. It's two archangels on, on the mercy seat upon the Ark of the Covenant. A three-in-one. Your brain is three-in-one. It's the cerebrum, the cerebellum, and then the brain stem or the medulla oblongata. Three parts, one brain. You have, the, you have Michael and Gabriel. Those are uh, two archangels on both ends of the mercy seat. Uh, Michael was a warring angel. Gabriel was a messenger angel. You have two functions of your brain. Your sensory functions like an under Gabriel and uh, the psychomotor function is like an under uh, Michael, who's a warring angel. Okay. You have a mercy seat. In your brain, you have what's called the cella tersica, which means Turkish saddle or a seat. Um, uh, the high priest he sprinkled blood toward the mercy seat in a circular fashion. You have blood. What feeds the brain with blood is the arterial circle of Willis, which is seven arteries that at the bait that feed the brain with oxygen. And, they're, and they make a circle in your head region. And it's to show you that Yahweh overturns and overturns his purpose. It's a circular fashion. It's an overturning. It, like the previous speaker talked about a round trip. Okay. Also, you have in the most holy place, you have these uh, angels embellished in the veils. Well, you have astrocytes in your brain, which are star-shaped cells. And, and angels represent, the stars represent angels. They're heavenly bodies. Okay. Uh, you also have a table, two tables of stone put in the Ark of the Covenant. See, you have, you have uh, a pituit, which is the master law to the children of Israel, that Ten Commandment law. You have a pituitary gland that, that uh, has two lobes, just like there were two tables of stone. Three hormones secrete from the posterior portion of the, of the pituitary gland, and seven hormones secreted out of the anterior. So you have three and seven. What's the three and seven showing for? It's showing how that Yahweh Elohim Yahshua has an eternal purpose operating through the seven ages. See, that's, a, that's the law of Yahweh, the law of the spirit operating his purpose down throughout eternity. See, operating through the seven dispensation and ages. That's what the three and the seven represent. But it's also showing, well, hmm. yeah, that's how you understand the, like our third aim is to investigate the unexplained spirit law or the so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. That law that governs Israel there, it's testifying to the law of the spirit of life. Uh, and that pituitary gland, it governs growth, metabolism, and reproduction. 
Well, everything that Yahweh created, he's the spirit law inside the animals. Do the animals grow? Do they eat food and continue life? That's metabolism. And do they reproduce? So it's showing that threefoldness of growth, metabolism, reproduction. It happens with the animals. It happens with the plants because plants grow. You understand? They metabolize. They take in sun and uh, photosynthesis. That's the sunlight. Then they have the nutrients from the water and the soil. And that's what causes them to grow. You understand? So that's their metabolism. And then don't they reproduce? They don't they have seed that had that they can plant, you can plant more and they can keep uh, reproducing. Well, that's the way people are. Uh, you, you were once a baby, but you've grown now. You understand? And then you've been eating food and continuing life. That's metabolism. That's a law governed with that pituitary gland. And then uh, when you uh, come of age, you can reproduce. You can have, you know, offspring. Okay. What's it talking about spiritually? It's talking about spiritually that when the Holy Spirit's preaching the true gospel to you, you can grow in the spirit. You got to be born in the spirit, of course, but then you grow. Then you keep coming to class and gain more knowledge and understanding. That's metabolism. You're taking in the truth and it's continuing your spiritual life. And then you can uh, grow up in the gospel and help somebody else and they can be born of the spirit. That's reproduction in the spirit. Okay, I think I have to. Uh, <laughs> so it talked about the Ark of the Covenant and cover it with the veil. Now there was a veil that separated between the most holy place and the holy place. It was blue, purple, and scarlet. Okay, well, what separates your head? See, oh, I didn't say that, but I guess I will. Uh, on this chart, the name of this chart is, uh, you cut off the name of it. Uh, <laughs> uh, the man made in the image of Elohim by the pattern of the tabernacle. You got the tabernacle pattern, most holy place, holy place, court roundabout. Then you see in the middle, you got tabernacle of man. Man has a head, re a head, head region. Uh, you have a chest region and you got an abdominal region. Now your abdominal region, what separates it from the chest region is your diaphragm. See, so from your diaphragm down to your feet, that's the court roundabout of your body. See, just like from the, and, uh, uh, and, and then your, uh, what separates your head from your chest is your neck, okay? Well, that's what happened in the tabernacle. In the most holy place, you got to, uh, that's the, that's, uh, that's, well, the most holy place is the uh, most Western compartment. Then you have the holy place, that's the, uh, that's the middle compartment. And what divides the holy, pla holy place and the most holy place is the second veil and it was blue, purple, and scarlet. Then what divides the holy place from the court roundabout is the first veil, okay? Uh, which was at the door and that's what divides it. So in your body, you have a head cavity or a head region, chest region, abdominal region. What separates your head from your chest is your neck. What separates your chest from your uh, abdominal region is the diaphragm and diaphragm means partition okay so now when you go over to the right you have man by the pattern you have a you have a head cavity that's like an under your most holy the, that's core your head is correlated with the most holy place in the tabernacle that's what we were doing earlier then you have a, a blue purple and scarlet veil that's your neck you got uh you got arteries coming up to feed the, the, the brain with oxygen. Then you got the veins coming down. Arteries are red, veins are blue. And then you have, uh, uh, then you have a thyroid gland that secretes iodine and iodine means purple. So that's a blue, purple, and scarlet in your neck region. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, hmm. So that's the veins going up, arteries, I mean, arteries going up, veins coming down, the arteries are red, the veins are blue in color, and then you have the thyroid gland, which is purple right in your neck region. 
So you just like in the tap, I think there's too much letters there. Right? I mean, too much, not anyway. So, uh, so when you're, uh, let's read an Exodus 40 again. So we got the Ark of the Covenant covered over with the veil. Go back to the tabernacle without all the numbers and stuff right now. You know, like, yeah. Don't see that one? Well, there's too much stuff there. It can't just, it's all right to just see it plain like we usually do. Thank you. Come on, uh, reader. You're about 40 and two, I think. Three, I don't know. All right. 40 and 3 of Exodus. It says, And thou shalt put therein the ark of the testimony and cover the ark with the veil. Verse 4 And thou shalt bring in the table and set it in order. Set in order the things that are to be set in order upon it. And now you bring, bring in the table. It. So bringing in the table is showing that after the head takes on shape and form, what goes, what happens is, well, <laughs> you got a few things with that. Just get the spinal cord in the green chart real quick. See, your central nervous system is threefold. Just like we say everything's three parts. See, and we told you how Yahweh's without shape and form. See, that brain is like a without discernible shape and form. And then the brain goes into the vertebral column. It's covered over in the, in the, the spinal column there. It's covered over, so it's showing it took on shape and form. And then it has the peripheral nerves that come on out of it, and it's goes, those nerves travel to all the parts of the body. And there's 63 showing that there were 63 generations from Adam to Yahshua the Messiah of the flesh. See, so now. Uh, what it's showing is that's how your body, your body works as a unity. It's the brain without discernible shape and form. Then you got the spinal column. That's, that's, that's him in shape and form, uh, invisible. And then when the veins go out throughout the, that's showing Yahshua came into the flesh. That's these three or one. Okay. Um, okay. Now the next thing that takes, so when that, comes down like that then you find out that the next thing that takes on shape and form is your heart that's the table of shoe bread when it, and it says he, he put the table and place everything in order upon it go back to the the body go back to the because it said the neck that's four it with 40 and four he says the next so after the uh, ark of the covenant we show correlated that now you got the table of shoe bread coming in. Now the table of shoe bread has four corners on it. It has two golden crowns around it. It had six loaves on one side and six loaves on another side. What's all that about? It's representing your heart. If you look at your heart, it's in four chambers. Okay. It, it's just like the table of shoe bread had four corners. It, the table of shoe bread had two coronary arteries going around it. You have, uh, I mean, you have the table of shoe bread had two golden crowns. Well, you have two coronary arteries that encircle the heart. And coronary means crown. See? Then there's 12 uh, loaves of bread, six on one side, six on other. Well, one part of your heart is for the venous blood, and the other part is for the arterial blood. It's separated, and there's just like, and you have, just like there's 12 loaves of bread, there's 12 pints in the average person of blood. So you still have the 12. Where the, where the bread was a sustenance for the high priest to eat, the, the, you know, uh, your heart is a sustenance. That's what sustains your life is the beating of your heart. Okay. And it beats 100,000 times a day. And we aren't even conscious of it. It's showing you the involuntary function, how that Yahweh gives you life, breath, and all things. Okay. Uh, read the next one, what, what's made. Now, verse four again. And thou shalt bring in the table and set in order 
the things that are to be set in order upon it. And thou shalt bring in the uh, seven branch lampstand and light the lamps thereof. So the so next thing after the heart is formed, you have the seven branch lampstand and you're supposed to light the lamps thereof. So the next thing that, that correlates in your human body with the seven branch aortic arch, which is the great blood vessel that uh, spreads the arterial blood from the top of your head to the bottom of your foot, throughout your arms, throughout all the parts of your body. Now the seven branch lampstand, it's, it, it's got seven branches. Well, uh, Yahweh's given you light or life seven days a week. He's operating his purpose through the seven dispensations and the seven ages. He's the light uh, of the eternal purpose. He's the sun. Okay. Seven is perfection. You have a seven branch. You have a middle branch. And then you have uh, three on one side, three on the other. But when Yahshua came in, there were three dispensations before he came in as Yahshua, the son of Nun. And as Yahshua the Messiah, then there's three dispensations after he came. When this of this of this age, there were three ages before he poured out the Holy Spirit, and that's how they 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 filled that lampstand. And that's when John saw him on the Isle of Patmos. He saw him stand in the midst of a seven branch lampstand. What's that midst all about? Well, just like the age we live in, it's the fourth age where he's pouring out the Holy Spirit. It's in the midst of seven ages. There were three ages before this age we live in. There's going to be three after this age. See, and so this seven branch lampstand, uh, it gave light to the holy place. Well, the seven branch aorta gives light to your uh, body. When the, wind, when the wind would blow the, the veil there, uh, the, there would be a flickering on the seven branch lampstand. Well, that's what you're... Are to, uh, that's what your aorta does. It pulsates and 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 it flickers the blood. It pulsates uh, so it can reach all the parts of the body and feed it with oxygenated blood. You got that lampstand gave light. The inside blood vessels are called lumens, and lumens means light. So you see how they correlate with each other and just how they're putting those things in the tabernacle. That's, that's how they're formed in your, in your body. And it's all connected, showing he's a unity. Read the next thing. Exodus 40, verse 5. And thou shalt set the altar of gold for the incense before the ark of the testimony and put the hanging of the door to the meeting tent. So it says now you got to put in the alt, the golden altar of incense. Now incense, there was a gaseous exchange. Yahweh had them offer up gold. I mean, had to offer. They had to off, the incense that they offered up there. It was burning, and they had to offer up uh, statute, onchet, galbanum, and frankincense. Four ingredients. And as the previous speaker was talking about, see, those wise men gave gifts. They gave gifts of gold. Well, see, and the, the gold is the most holy place principle. The two archangels on both ends of the mercy seat, that was solid gold. The Ark of the Covenant was wood overlaid with gold. So gold's most holy place. Frankincense was one of the spices in the incense on the altar of incense. And then the myrrh, that was in the anointing oil that was at the door. So it's going by a pattern. That's why they gave gifts. But if you didn't know that, you don't know why they gave the gifts and so on. It's because he's tabernacling in a body. And they had to give the gifts to make the uh, things in the tabernacle. So this altar of incense with four ingredients in the, uh, in the incense, statute, onchit, galbanum, and frankincense. Get the migratory pattern, Moses at the burning bush. And so there's a burning taking place at the altar of incense. There's four ingredients that make up uh, 
uh, the incense on the altar of incense. Now, when Moses got the name, see, he's in the holy place of the migratory pattern. Egypt's likened into the court roundabout. The Red Sea's like the first veil. The wilderness of Sinai's like the holy place. So just like we were reading about the altar of incense being in, in the holy place of your, of your body compared to the tabernacle, that's where Moses has the vision uh, of, of, and Yahweh gives him his name. And where there's four ingredients in the altar and, 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 and it was, he gave his name at a bush burning and not being consumed. Well, that's going on in your body. That's what your lungs is. Go back to the lungs. Uh, the lungs, uh, the lungs is a, they call it the bronchial tree. It's a bush burning and not being consumed. See, and there's four ingredients, there's four major uh, elements that are in the air, just like there were four ingredients to the altar of incense. See, uh, you have uh, nitrogen is 70 some percent, oxygen's 20 some percent. You have carbon dioxide or carbons in there. So carbon, that's uh, the sixth element. Uh, well, you have carbon in the air, and then you have hydrogen as aqueous vapor because you have water vapor in the air. So that's where the hydrogen, that's four ingredients. What's the four ingredients of the altar of incense? Four ingredients of the lung showing. Get the name chart. It's showing the four ingredients or the four letters that make up Yahweh's name. You see at the top there? Yod, hey, wah, hey, that's four letters, and you breathe the name. <sighs> so you see how it all correlates there. And you breathe with your nose too. And in your nose triangular, just like those vessels we just talked about with the table of shoe bread, the seven branch lampstand and the altar of incense. If you draw a line to those vessels, you're going to get a triangular shape. And so with, when you breathe with your nose, it goes down to your chest region where all those things are operating, where you have the heart, the aorta and the lungs. Uh, okay, I better, better start moving there. Okay, uh, uh, let's go. Oh, and so you see four ingredients to Elohim, the title of Elohim. Four letters, Aleph, Lamed, Hey, and Mem. Yahweh's uh, Yod, Hey, Wah, Hey. Yahshua's Yod, uh, Yod, Hey, Shin, Aim. You understand? Four letters. You see how he's the intercessor for us? See, but people don't know those things. Uh, but we do because we have a divine vision revelation. Let's go back and read. Got to try to finish up where the thing ends there. Go back to the tabernacle. Okay, where, where are we at, 40 and 6 or something? Yes. And thou shalt set the altar of the burnt offering before the door of the tabernacle of the tent of the congregation. Verse 7. Now and it talks know. about uh, setting the altar of the burnt offering. You see down there, when the high priest went through the gate, the first thing, 23 feet up in there, that's where they set up the altar of the burnt offering. So now. The high priest had to go in there and kill a sacrifice and offer it up at the altar. It was burning. He had to put the blood on the four horns of the altar. Well, that's what happens in your body. There's food offered up every day. And that food, whatever, whatever you eat, it was once living. If it was a fruit, if it's a vegetable, if it's a plant, if it's an animal, it's a fish, a bird, it was once living, but it sacrificed its life so that you might live. And matter of fact, your face is threefold with the eyes, like into the most holy place. Uh, the nose would be like the holy place. Then your mouth's like the court roundabout. And when you eat with your mouth, it goes down to the court roundabout. That's where the sacrifice are offered up in your body, it goes down into your mouth, goes down into your stomach, and it's being digested. So, it, so where they had to kill a sacrifice, uh, whatever you eat, something has to die and it's buried in you. And so right here where there's a burning taking place at the altar to burn that sacrifice up, you have, you have the enzymes that burn and digest your food. See, 
and there's four uh, horns on this altar where the high priest put the blood. Well, you, and it's four square, you understand, of that altar. Well, you have the, uh, your large intestines, or you have a ascending colon, transverse colon going across, descending colon going down, and you have a sigmoid colon. It makes just like the same as the door frame, just like Yahshua dying on the cross. And there's four points of blood because you have four colic arteries. Uh, the blood shows up to aid in digestion. So there's a burning taking place on the altar. There's a burning Five taking place. Up. Yes, and your gastrointestinal tract. Yes. Uh, uh, sacrifices offered up. You got sacrifice offered up in your physical body. See, and this is the foundation of, uh, of your life. You have to eat to live. And it's showing you have to believe the gospel of Yahshua the Messiah, how he died, buried, resurrected. See, and that's what that food does. It's dead and buried in you, then it resurrects the nutrients to give you life. Okay, uh, keep reading. Verse seven. And thou shalt set up the court round about and hang up the hanging at the court gate. What it did, what did it say some about the labor? Mm. Uh, yeah, verse seven. And thou shalt set the laver between the tent of the congregation and the altar. And so put the end of the there talked is. about the altar. Now it's got to put the laver there. The laver was there to wash the sacrifices, a water principle or a burial. The altar, you had blood. The laver, you have water. See, now that correlates with your kidneys. And your kidneys, uh, when you put them together, they'll be circular liken unto that labor there. And the labor was for the washing of the sacrifice. Your kidneys are for the washing and cleansing of your blood. One part of your kidneys is called pelvic. Pelvic means basin, and that's what the labor was, was a basin of water. It had waters above and waters beneath in the labor. So you have waters above. The, the, when it filters the blood, the water, the water, uh, the nutrients that are good goes back into the bloodstream, and that which is bad goes down into your bladder. And then you get, and just as they exchange the water, uh, the high priest had to exchange the water because it'd be bloody after washing the sacrifices. You exchange your water by, by getting rid of your urine. See, it had a spigot system there. Okay, read on. Just reaching verse eight now. And thou shalt set up the court round about. And have now the court the round about, they had pillars, bars, and boards. That's representing that after all those organs in your body, in your head, chest, abdominal are made, then he starts making the bones around your body. And the bones represent the inner man. That's why when the, somebody's buried, the flesh rots away, but the bones stay around to show you that your soul is eternal. You're going to either have eternal life or eternal damnation. And John 17 and 3 says, this is life eternal, that they might know that Yahweh is the only true Elohim and Yahshua Messiah, whom thou hast sent. So, so those bones represent the inner man or your soul. See, where we got a body having a head cavity, chest cavity, abdominal cavity, the reality of you is you are spirit, soul, inside of a body. And the body's not going to last forever. See, it's, uh, and your soul's either going to have eternal life, knowing Yahweh, El, and Yahshua right now, and receiving the Holy Spirit, or if you believe the satanic spirit, his lies and deception, you're going to have eternal damnation. Read. And have up the hanging at the court gate. Yeah, Where's the that? hanging at the court gate. And Joshua is hanging on the cross. Okay, uh, read. Exodus 40, verse 9. And thou shalt take the anointing oil and anoint the tabernacle and all that is therein, and thou shalt hallow it, and all the vessels thereof, Okay, it shall be holy. That's right. So after all these things were placed in the tabernacle, just like when the babies formed, then they anointed all the vessels to show you that the spirit animates all your organs to give you life. It's also to show that the Holy Spirit's going to animate the nine attributes that form your soul. See? Now read Exodus 40, 30. Verse 30. Get and he Moses sat charge. the laver between the tent 
of the congregation and the altar and put water there to wash with us. Now this is Exodus 40, 30, that they had to put the wash, the wash with the labor. Do you know Yahshua came in year 4,000 and at 30 years old, he's watered, he's baptized by John the Baptist. That was, that was year 4,030. This is Exodus 40, 30. The same number that's on the scriptures is telling you what Yahshua Messiah is going to do when he comes in and is baptized at year 4,030. Read. 33, 40, 33. 40, 33, please. Did somebody read it? Can you hear me? 40, hear. Yeah, there is some difficulty. 40, 33. And he reared up the court round about the tabernacle and the altar and set up the hanging of the court gates. So Moses finished the work. So it, he, re he reared up the court round about the tabernacle, set the hanging of the court gate, and set up the altar, and it said, Moses finished the work. Well, that's, that's Exodus 40, 33. Well, Yahshua Messiah came in year 4033, and he's hanging on the cross year 4033. And dying for the sin of the world. That's 4033, just like Exodus 4033. Uh, that's when the altar and the hanging of the court gate and the altars for the death principle, it's showing what's going to happen year 4033. 4033, Yahshua's on the cross, being the sacrifice for the sin of the world. Read 4034. Then a cloud covered the tent of the congregation. And the glory of Yahweh filled the tabernacle. Then the cloud covered Moses' chart. Then the cloud covered the tent of the congregation. And, and, and the glory of Yahweh filled the tabernacle. The tabernacle was filled at 4034. Well, when Yahshua died, buried, resurrected, when he poured out the Holy Spirit, that's when he filled the tabernacle with the, the, the tabernacle of man with the Holy Spirit. That was June 6, year 4034. So Exodus 34 with the cloud. And why was it a cloud? Because it was a cloud where Moses saw it. So then he has to show, be a cloud to endorse it. And then that cloud's representing the spirit and the glory of Yahweh is the Holy Spirit filling the tabernacle of mankind starting this age at 4034. This is the greatest teaching in the world. Uh, we can't get it all. And uh, but you, if you learn things, you you thank Yahweh Elm through His Son Yahshua Messiah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Dr. Frank Lewis, for being our second speaker. We have now come to the end of another spiritual lecture. Are there any questions? Quick question. Uh, the count is retrogressive from Adam. So when you say 4,034, you really mean zero and then 34. Isn't that so? Yes, uh, Yahshua Messiah appeared. Yes, when he 4, came 000. through the loins of the Virgin Mary, it was exactly 4,000 years from the man Adam. Thank you. So then you start counting up from there, yes. So that's why we went, he was 30 years old when he was baptized, so that's 40-30. He goes in a three and a half year ministry, dies at 40-33, We're really in about the 10th month or so, you know. And then when, he, then when he pours out the Holy Spirit, that would have been his 34th birthday, which is 40-34 of the year of mankind, yes. Thank you. You're welcome, praise Joshua. Okay, are there any other questions? Are there any announcements? All right, on behalf of the Spanish Stone Branch, we thank you all for joining us online today to study with us. And we also thank our speakers, everybody who participated. And we thank our host, Dr. Lenore Allen, for hosting us again. And um, we hope that you continue to study with us. Classes are held here every Sunday from 4 
to 6 p.m. Jamaican time. Every Sunday at Kenneth Scott's Place in Spanish Town from 11 to 1 p.m. Every Thursday at the Dean's House in Spanish Town from 4 to 6 p.m. So at Dr. Branko Roberts, Friday from 5 to 7 p.m. and every Sunday from 9 to 11 a.m. And I will now proceed with the doxology. Known to him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise Elohim, Yahshua the Messiah, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and all times, let us all see. Hallelujah. 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 